I'm not even going to tear up. <clears throat> I, yeah, I can't. God knows I can't grasp seeing that. I just want your time. channel this is your girl kiana if you're new to my channel please don't forget to hit that subscribe button the, 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 the subscribe button lord jesus this is like my fifth take but we're just gonna keep this in there today i will be talking about something that's a little more serious um it's just about being a single mom if you can relate you can relate if you're a single dad this can apply to you as well so let's just get into it for me the i just feel like the Lord didn't tell me, you know, ahead of time, like, yo, Kiana, it's going to be a struggle. Like, it's going to be a struggle. I didn't know to the extent of what the struggle was going to be. By the way, I'm in a closet, so I'm not in the closet in the closet, but I'm in the closet. People are sleeping, so that's why I'm in here. Um, but yes, I had my first child when I was 24. 24, I was fast. I was just fast. I don't know. Guys, I don't... I was fast, and I thought I was grown. I thought I knew what I was doing. I didn't, obviously. Um, And it's... It, it was a struggle because I thought, like, you know, you're going to get pregnant. You know, the baby's going to come out, and it's just going to be peaches and creamy. No. First of all, I gained 75 pounds. 75 pounds. Did you... 75 yes 75 has that weight went away well it went away but it came back it was it was rough and she came out went straight to the NICU it was some problems she was in uh, the hospital for two weeks um they said she stopped growing in my stomach at seven months but I had her at nine months so that in itself was very overwhelming for me I'm just like um what happened to you know a quick vaginal birth and then you know boom boom we get to go home in two days no I literally had a C-section, emergency C-section, C-section, which was better than a vaginal because I can't push nothing. I can't, okay? Shout out to all those who have done the natural. Comment down below if you did natural births because if you did, you deserve recognition. So comment down below if you did because your girl, I am a sucker for pain. I can't do pain. That's why I have no tattoos. That's why I don't do microblading. I, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't so yes I that whole process was like oh you know that wasn't it it wasn't that rough you know after we went home it was obviously getting the hang of being a new mom and being you know a single parent it was like it was it was a learning experience but it was you know I love babies so it was like you know I feel like I what's the word I adapted to it quickly you know I knew what to do I didn't have you know that you know postpartum i'll say i didn't have that so fast forward four and a half years later i was fast again but this time i was almost 30 and i'm just like girl slow down like you need to slow down i it was rough yeah and i gained 75 pounds again i don't know what it was with the 75 pounds business i was 75 pounds again but this time your girl couldn't lose the weight because i was almost 30 so i'm just like eh -eh. So, you know, the fat phase, the dark neck, the pregnancy acne, the swollen fat feet, you know, the fat hands. My hands are already fat. They were fatter. Um, my nose. We're not going to talk about that one. Once I went to doctors and um, they're like, oh, you can do a C-section or you can do a vaginal birth. I said, you say, what? My child's almost nine pounds. You think I'm going to do a vaginal birth? no the c-section please check me in check me in so i did a c-section with her thank god because she was huge well god knew what he was doing because he knew i he knew i couldn't push so shout out to y'all who have 13 pound babies that push you know it's just not me so her being born was rough that was the roughest time because she was born with sickle cell guys 
if you don't know about sickle cell, it's a blood disease and it's something that it's a chronic blood disease. So meaning she'll have it all her life. It's crazy because, you know, they, I feel like medical professionals give you, you know, they give you advice. They were saying like, oh, Kayla has sickle cell SS, you know, she's prone to getting um, seizures and strokes and she, you know, is going to have crisis and stuff like that. And so I'm just like, because my sister um, and a few other friends I have um, have sickle cell and they have sickle cell S, I understood, you know, the, you know, what I was dealing with. And so it was just heartbreaking. Honestly, it was really heartbreaking um, to say the least. <laughs> and so uh, whew, Kayla has been in the hospital. I can't even count how many times. But the thing I'm thankful for is because they have every three months she has to go to the hospital and get um what they call a transcranial doppler which is basically an ultrasound of the brain so they let you so you can so they will see if she uh how prone she is to strokes and seizures and her records have shown that she should be getting them and that she should be getting pain crisis and everything but i think god knows that i can't god knows that i can handle it like i don't think i yeah i can't grasp like seeing her and I, I, I I'm not even gonna tear up. <clears throat> I yeah, I can't God knows I can't grasp seeing that. So Thankfully, she hasn't had any. Thankfully, you know, she is, should be seven on Monday. And praise God, she has not had a crisis or a stroke or a seizure or anything like that. And I think that's a blessing in itself. And that in itself, the doctors are like, I, we don't, we don't understand how she hasn't had any because she has the worst case sickle cell, but, you know, keep doing whatever you're doing. And so it's, it's a lot harder, like I said with Kayla, because she requires more like, with the temperatures and you know if her temperature gets 101 she has to go to the hospital um or 101.5 she's go to the hospital or if you know she gets too hot or she gets too cold you have to make sure that like the transitioning seasons um with her clothing you know where she's at in location it's just every day is a constant 24 7 monitor monitoring like when she's sleeping making sure she's not too hot when she's um playing make sure she's not overexerting herself and making sure she sits down and you know stays hydrated so it's harder with kayla because she requires more but honestly i don't think i could have any other way because you know i i strongly believe that god wouldn't give you more than you can bear and i feel like you know kayla kamora is a like a they're a great balance for me you know it's hard to um you know take care of kids but you know my i've always since they've been born, I've always been more of a um, more structured parent. I I guess structure and strict parent. I'm not one to, you know, let you try to hit me or slap me or say crazy things to me because you will get you will get you will get caught. So from the beginning, I've always talked like taught them that, you know, I'm crazy. Like I am. I, I should be in a mental institu institution because I'm that crazy. So unless you want to see me get to that kind of crazy, I suggest you not test me. So from the beginning, they've known that I'm crazy. So they're really good kids. Like they they listen and, you know, I, I say things. And unfortunately, I have to say them with a more baritone so they can really understand. The daily struggles, um, the daily struggles... <laughs> You know, for me, it's just, you know, I guess not doing what I want to do because I have to do what I have to do for them. And it's a blessing to see them thrive and to grow. And, you know, but it's it hurts sometimes knowing that, like, I can't get them what they want all the time or I can't provide for them or, you know, I can't, you know, they see their other friends or, you know, peers, you know, having this or that and they can't get it because I don't have the money to. Um, so that part's hard. Having unconditional love and me teaching them the value of a dollar and teaching them how to treat people and how to act as, um, 
little girls that will grow up to be young women to be women godlike women i um that's something i strongly um try to manifest in their life and teach them every day that you know that's more important than having the glitz and the glam and the you know louis gucci fendi prada it's nice to have and it's nice to have you know the latest toys stuff like that but it's not everything it really isn't and you know when now that they're seven and eleven you know, almost seven eleven. It's it's easier for me because they always say, you know, we don't have to get this or we don't have to get that. Or um, when they get money, you know, they always like, oh, mommy, here's money to go do something for yourself. So it's I'm blessed because I've was able to be consistent in a sense of being structured because i can't deal i can't be without kind of structure and guidance and having like a boom 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 because it just makes it more chaotic um so i'm thankful for that it's hard it's very hard um it's very hard but i'm thankful for my village like it really takes a village to raise kids to raise a child or kids it's it's a lot so i shout out to all my people who are my village you know who you are so i need to shout you out so i really thank you guys because you guys are truly the backbone for us three, the special Ks, Kayla Kamora and Kiana. It's 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 hard and I know for sure I couldn't do it without y'all. So shout out to you. You know who you are. I love you dearly. Like the way I go my day to day is through Christ, through God. I have to pray. I have to pray because sometimes I want to lay hands and the Lord knows, the Lord knows. Like he has to get me through it. So I'm thankful that God has blessed me with the two kids that I have that I, I would never have no more. Okay. I got my stuff out so that I would never have any more kids. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I know that it's hard for you if you are a single mother or a single father. I know it's hard. I know sometimes you want to give up. Sometimes you want to just pull your hair out or just hit a wall or just get so frustrated that you want to either cut your child out or hit your child or just do something that's you can't take back but honestly it's just that day the next day will come you have a better spirit a better attitude and you can just move on and know that you are a great person you're a great parent and you are doing your best and if you're doing your best that's all your children can ask for so continue to be great continue to do what you can do and the things that you wanted to do them for yourself take time for yourself don't forget to have self-love because without Loving yourself without having time for yourself, you can't provide for your children. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I just want your time.